Hi, this is Lisa from Punk Creation and welcome back. So have I got a treat for you guys today. We're going to park the Steampunk Journal just for a couple of days while I think of some new and inspiring pages for my signatures. But I just wanted to introduce you to the other love of my crafting world and that is Powertex. Now I first met the Powertex team in 2017 when I went to the NEC which is a local exhibition centre here in the UK and they encouraged me to find my local tutor which I did and I went along for a day with Sharon Jackson so thank you to her because she got me hooked on this amazing craft. Sharon also inspired me to become a Powertex tutor myself and that's what I did so after my level one training I was then able to teach workshops in my local area. If you're interested in coming along to either one of my workshops or finding your local, local tutor and they're all over the UK just go onto the Powertex website and you'll see a link of all of the tutors there. Obviously at the moment with the pandemic they're not doing classes however as soon as they start running them again they will welcome you with open arms but just beware you will be hooked it's very 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 addictive right I just want to quickly show you this one now I made this for a class a couple of months ago and this was a journal uh, sorry a travel themed journal I did and I've covered it in embellishments as well as the fabric, but you can see what the Powertex does. It makes the fabric nice and hard and gives the book or the project lots and lots of texture. Now, Powertex is environmentally friendly. I'll just show you the back there. Okay, it's water-based, so you can wash it off your hands and paint brushes. Um, etc and it's non-toxic okay now if you were doing um, a statue or something that you wanted to put outside after three weeks uh, Powertex is then weatherproof so you can do some wonderful sculptures for your garden just move that one to the side there right so let's start with today's project so what i wanted to do with this one today we're going to stay on the journal theme i've got these mdf bases i can take this off now actually these mdf bases and again i'll put the link in the description box below of where i get these from so i ordered these bases from a fellow tutor called liz dixon um, and she has these in her shop so i'll put that link down below so Powertex, as I said before, it comes in lots of different colours. Give it a really good shake and put some on a tray. Don't put out more than you think you're going to use initially because as it starts to cure in the air, you can't put it back in the bottle. Okay, so the bronze one looks like this. And what I'm going to do first is just put a layer of Powertex onto my MDF base. So I've covered this MDF base in a thin layer of Powertex and I'm just soaking um, some fabric in in the Powertex, okay. Now you don't want it too wet. You want it so that um, it doesn't drip. And I mean that there, if you can see, that's a little bit too wet. So I'm just going to take another piece of fabric and just take the excess off with that fabric, uh, with, the, with the soaked piece. Okay, because I'm gonna be using this anyway. What I tend to do is when I'm doing a project, whether it doesn't matter what it is, I do a trial run first without Powertex, so I know roughly where I want my fabric to go. Okay. Now I love Powertex so much because you can use all your recycled stuff. So you go through your stash and you think, oh, I love that piece, I don't want to throw it away. Or you've got an old t-shirt from one of your children, you think, actually, I don't want to throw that away, I'm going to turn it into a project. And that's what makes this such a wonderful medium to use. So we're just going to just 
you can see it in shot. So literally dip it in, okay, and then massage it into the fabric. So I'm going to cover this and I shall be right back. Just a small tip that I wanted to share with you. If you're covering a piece of fabric and you, you haven't quite got enough on there, instead of dipping the whole thing back into your power text, just put a little drop on your finger and then you can massage it into the spots where you don't have it on there. Because if you dunk the whole thing into the power text, you're going to have far too much on that fabric and it's going to be far too wet. It does dry eventually if it's too wet, but quite often you'll see a drip mark or you'll see, you know, you, you'll, you'll see that you've used just far too much product. Now I just pop a little bit just to adhere it where I want it. Okay, and as you can see here, I've used, once the fabric is wet, I have then scrunched, scrunched it up to create texture within that fabric. Now, the idea of this project was to, once it's painted, I wanted to paint it in the rainbow colours um, as a sort of NHS tribute to the key workers for this pandemic and I didn't want to cover it then with embellishments I've got a couple of flowers and a heart to put on it but I wanted to keep it quite plain and just let the the folds in the fabric and let the colors and the the textures that I put in with the fabric be all that it needs it doesn't need lots of embellishments I mean don't get me wrong I love my metal embellishments and things but I think this will work absolutely fine without it I, I realized my video had stopped recording so I've jumped a, ahead a fair bit I've put on here a clay daisy large clay daisy that's about an inch and a bit. Now this is made from clay with um, into a mould um, and then it air dries. This is a smaller one. You can find these moulds on the Powertex website and then I've put a heart in the centre there and I've just added some, some lace here. So this is touch dry in just over an hour. Um, however, I'm going to come back to you when it's when it's completely dry and then we can paint it. So I am back. The cover has dried now, as you can see. And here, that's gone, that's gone rock hard. Okay, and you can see all of the texture that's been created just by using these beautiful laces and this textured fabric. Now I just wanted to pull in this piece here. Now I did this at the start of lockdown um, and this is just a bottle. There you go, there's the, there's the top. So there's no embellishments on this at all. Just by using different types of fabric, you can create absolutely beautiful, beautiful pieces. So I'm going to pop that in our coffee shop when we reopen and try and raise some money for the NHS. So there's our, there's our journal cover. So this is the paint that we're going to use. Okay. This is Power Colour, again by Powertex, you can find it on their website, and it comes in a powdered form. Now, I'm going to show you how to paint the project that you've made. This is the Easy Varnish that we use, and this turns the powder into the paint that we need. The consistency that we need. So I'm just going to pop a tiny drop onto my work surface 
and this is just a plastic sheet so that's why my table is covered in plastic so that I can use it for my paint so we're going to start with purple so this one is lilac I'm probably going to try and make this darker not really a lilac -y person so we dip it into the varnish and then dip it into the into the color like that and then we literally make the paint on the surface like that work it into your brush you don't want it too dry and you don't want it too wet okay if it's too wet it goes very translucent onto your on your project and that's not what you want so there's the paint there okay I'm just gonna pop the lid on to my powder I know what I'm like I'll send it everywhere we take the excess off on our kitchen paper there and then we're just going to we're going to keep the paintbrush quite horizontal and we're just going to pull it across our work like that I am going to need a heck of a lot more that's better excess off and then we can pull it across our project where we want it and it's always better to keep adding color than just going on with far too much at the start because if you go on with far too much at the start it's a lot harder to take obviously that color away there's never any mistakes with power text because if you do a project and you really do hate it you just start again and just go over it with power text and literally start again so there's never a mistake we call them another excuse for an embellishment. So I'm now moving on to the blue. And this is called, what's this one called? Blue Caraco. Beautiful blue. Now I don't know if you saw, I didn't wash my brush. I don't like to wash my brush too much because I don't want any of the water to go onto my project so I'm just going to go in with the blue and I'm just blending that blue in with the purple on my project okay so I've moved on and I've started the green exactly the same way paintbrush is a bit wet there And we keep the paintbrush horizontal so we don't get in too much of the nooks and crannies because we want to see the texture come through just by running the paintbrush over the top. Okay, so I am going to clean my brush now because I'm going on to the yellow. I don't mind a small blend, but um, so bright yellow. Again, into the into the varnish and then into the colour excess off on the on the paper and then again just a 
over the top. So this technique is called dry brushing and it's because the paint is fairly dry. That's gone on a little bit wet there because I needed to clean my brush to go onto the yellow. So I'm just taking the excess off with a dry brush, completely dry, clean and dry brush. There we go. Okay, so we're going to now move on to the orange. So I've added the, the orange. And once the brush is sort of dry, dry, I like to just sort of flick the colour on. And then again, if you want to blend a little bit more, just use a dry brush and you can blend those colours in. When you've got a strong colour like an orange going onto a yellow, need to try and blend it as best as we can okay we're going to go straight on to the red now okay so we've mixed up the red I'm just going to run it over the top here So I just wanted to bring in this this one here. Now this is the transparent power text. Now I've noticed here a little bit of my lace has come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop down a bit of the transparent just to stick that down. As the name suggests, this power text dries transparent. And it comes in the same sizes as the other bottles, but this one is in an easy to use bottle with a with a small nozzle which makes it great for smaller projects and those little embellishments and i use it for my for my journals as well sort of paper craft and stuff actually if i'm going to adhere bigger um, embellishments to my paper craft i will use I will use that transparent power text. So that does that will dry. Let's squidge it in there. Okay, so just for a final bit of shimmer, we're just going to use this one here. It's called Power Pearl. And I'm just going to put a very, very, very thin layer over the top. And this is just going to add a little bit of sparkle to the, to the project. And I just want to capture, I'm just flicking it over the top because I just want to capture the, the bits of fabric that stick out, top of that flower, the top of the heart. Now this, I've made this incredibly dry, which is what I want. I don't want a thick paint for this because I don't want it to go on too thickly. This just 
it just captures that texture beautifully in those fabrics there. here with my headphones and a big paintbrush. There we go. So the colours have blended really nicely. That power pearl just gives it a beautiful pearly sparkle. And there we go. So there's the cover to our journal. I will do the back cover off camera and then we shall get together with the whole thing put together. So here we have the top and the bottom cover. So you can see here how the Power Pearl has just brought up all of those beautiful textures in the fabric. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it over and that's the back. So I didn't do the same rainbow on the back. I used some different colors on the back and I'll just show you what I used. I used a terra violet. I used the green ginger like I did before. I also used the copper, I don't know where I've done, Put it now this one here from the color tricks range okay and again blended it on the side and then just went over the final the final color with some power pearl just to bring out the textures and the in those bits of fabric there so that's it um, the inside I've left just wooden for now. I shall paint that up and get it ready for some page inserts um, and then that'll be ready for my Etsy shop. So thank you so much for joining me on this Powertex project. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope that if you do want to start a new craft and you're looking for something to do then you give a Powertex workshop a try. So once again, thank you very much. Um, if you do like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell and then you won't miss any of my projects. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.